This video will serve as a general introduction into the immune system. It will also provide some information about the innate part of the immune system as well. So the immune system, its job is to protect us. It provides resistance to disease and it's subdivided into two specific parts. The first part is the innate or what we call nonspecific defense. And it's important to remember that it is not antigen specific. So anything dealing with antigen specificity will apply to the adaptive defense system. And that's the one that is down here. So let's talk about the innate or nonspecific defense system first. It has two lines of defense within it. It has the first and second lines of defense. And a good way to think of this is that it's more generalized and we're born with it. So it doesn't have to specifically recognize a foreign invader, essentially. So the first line of defense is the external body membranes, specifically the skin and the mucosa. The second line of defense has a few things in it. It has antimicrobial proteins, phagocytes, and it has other cells as well. And one of the um, important mechanisms is inflammation. So all of those are not antigen specific. The third line of defense takes longer to react, but it has the ability to remember what that antigen first looked like. So the immune system, it's not a structural system like the cardiovascular system like the blood vessels or the lymphatic system. It's more of a functional system. And you can think of the lymphatic system as its playground and the immune system plays. It responds to attackers in, in the immune system. But both of them, even though they're separate, they are intertwined. So there's cross communication between them. So let's say the immune system, the innate defense system is not enough, it's going to say, hey, adaptive defense system, I need your help here as well. So a simplified overview of both the innate and adaptive defenses are, first of all, the innate is nonspecific and it has the first line of defense and the second line of defense. So the first line of defense is the surface barriers. Then the second line of defense is the internal defenses. So think of it this way. Once the bacteria, the first thing that they encounter is the surface. The, if they get through that successfully, then they, get, they have to get through the internal defenses. And then if that's not enough, the adaptive defenses are going to play a role. And there's two types of these. So the word humoral, the word humor means liquid and it's referring only to the B cells, the B lymphocytes. The cellular immunity, or what we call cellular immunity, refers to T cells. So the first line of defense, uh, this is just a little more description of it. Uh, there's things like the keratin in the skin, that's a tough protein for protection. There's um, things like the mucosa, which have provides a mechanical barrier. So an example of this, let's imagine that you are swallowing food um, and there happens to be a bone in that food. Your immune system is gonna protect you and specifically it's the first line of defense. The skin and mucous membranes, um, examples of those are the acid mantle, enzymes, mucin, defensins, and there's a table that does a great job in showing the various examples of the first line of defense. So you should be aware of these examples. Uh, so I mentioned the acid mantle of the skin. Uh, what this is, is it, it prevents um, bacterial growth, inhibits bacterial growth due to the pH. The keratin I mentioned before is the protein in the skin, the tough protein, and the mucous membranes, um, some of them, these are the wet membranes. The mucus substance is produced at the mucous membranes, and what it does is it traps microorganisms 
in the respiratory and the digestive tract. So there's these other examples, nasal hair, cilia, gastric juice. There's also an acid mantle, a pH in the vagina that's going to prevent the growth of bacteria, lacrimal secretion, tears, and saliva. And finally, urine. So our next slide now is showing the second line of defense. These are also innate defenses, so it's important to remember that it's still nonspecific. So there's phagocytes. There's uh, natural killer cells, which are a type of lymphocyte, inflammatory response, antimicrobial proteins, fever. And what happens is um, there is toll-like receptors, which uh, you don't know, need to know a lot of detail about these, but basically these receptors are proteins that they play a role in innate immunity. They identify pathogens. And so complement is a group of proteins that's activated by the antigen antibody complexes and some microorganisms directly. So here's an example of where the adaptive line of defense is going to tell the innate line of defense, specifically complement from the second line of defense, to be activated. So the phagocytes, as we already know, are neutrophils primarily and macrophages. Remember the macrophages develop from monocytes and these are just specific macrophages in specific areas of the body. So the process of phagocytosis, it's a non-specific disease resistance mechanism performed by neutrophils and macrophages as well. So this slide shows phagocytosis what is actually going to happen and we can see in this case the first thing is is that the phagocyte is going to adhere to the pathogen sticks to it using these receptors the phagocyte kind of eats the bacteria it engulfs it and destroys it at the lysosome and the lysosome is going to have these acid hydrolase enzymes to destroy it. And then sometimes finally it gets rid of it through exocytosis. So another cell that's a part of the second line of defense is called the natural killer cell. And the natural killer cell, it can kill cancer cells as well as virus infected cells before the adaptive immune system is activated. So sometimes it the adaptive immune system is still needed. So it attacks cells that lack these self-receptor proteins. So we all have many, many proteins that are on our cells. And those proteins identify whether you are, you know, John or whether you're Ebony, for example. So the immune system knows right away what is John and what is Ebony. So these natural killer cells are going to attack whatever's not itself. So for example, let's say there's some ebony cells that are in John from maybe blood donation. It attacks those non-self receptors. And when it kills these, it does these by what's called apoptosis. This is basically cell death. And the way it works is really kind of cool. It uses what are called perforins. And that sounds like the word perforate. That's exactly what it does. It perforates or puts holes in the cell membrane and it releases these contents of the cell. 